I want to talk about a problem we had at William Hill and how we solved it using a CMS. So the problem we had was that um, we have a bunch of states um, that, that the William Hill Sportsbook app is live in these states. So you can download the app or you can go to a retail location. Um, but the point is there's information re related to the, to the state here on our main website. This is what's called our corporate website. And you can see that there are hundreds um, of locations uh, in, in Nevada um, where someone could place a bet uh, at a sports book, make a deposit, um, all sorts of stuff. So, so these locations are all here on the, on, on, on the site. And the same thing in Indiana. Indiana has locations here. Uh, they also have something called venues, which are really just featured locations. Um, you know, companies might pay to be sponsored. Um, that you know, they might say, "Hey, you know, let's let's have a relationship where you you know feature these." Okay. And again, this doesn't, doesn't look great. This is an old, our old website that we're presently redoing. Um, but the point is, like, we have this data on, you know, we we have the hours of operation, we have the address. And what happened was that frequently, especially in 2020 and 2021 with the pandemic, hours of operation changed dramatically. These are live locations. And for a state like Nevada with hundreds of locations uh, to get all of the um, hours of operations, um, you know, uh, up to date, you know, with any changes. So, for example, if the state goes on lockdown, they had to we had to update hundreds of things. Um, the problem that William Hill faced is that these were all all these values were hard coded in the website and that's what happens a lot of times when a, a company uh, has a website that they put out there a lot of times they just hard code stuff um, and think well if we need to update something we can just change it on the website um, the problem is you know we're in you know a dozen states across the u.s with a dozen different marketing teams that are responsible for managing all these venues and they want to make updates so the development team that was managing this corporate website was now suddenly getting dozens of requests a week um, to like just do something as simple as change hours um, and so now your developers uh, are just turned into like data entry folks um, and so they're unhappy doing that work and it takes a lot of time the whole business kind of slows to a crawl because it it has to go through a uh, you know, a sprint cycle, an app develop, um, a feature development cycle. So, you know, just to change something, oh, we're going to change, we're going to, on Tuesday, we, you know, we're going to open till midnight, you know, well, that, you know, goes through, it goes through QA, it goes through all these processes. And, you know, the company, you know, Horseshoe Hammond, um, the casino might say, hey, we updated yesterday. Why can't you update those hours on your website? And and the marketing you know person would say, oh yeah, no, it's in process. It'll take two weeks, you know, because of our sprint development process. So that was really a a, a pain point. Um, and I'll show you where that's hard coded right there inside of uh, right here inside of this is the file you can see. Oh my goodness, it's ten thousand lines long. You know, here's all the dates. The hours of operation and again these are all gross strings you know this is not something that you know is even clean data it's not even good clean data it's just um, really really pretty gross and so our, our thing and it was done quickly right that was the mandate from the business you know this this happened two years ago and the business was like just get us a new website up there as soon as possible so they made these decisions that really sacrificed doing things the right way um, and it became unmaintainable, right? Like I said, if you get dozens of these sorts of requests, um, you, you, you're, spend, you're having all that developer time on them. Um, another, another sort of request that we got was um, every promotion, when you go to you know, a, a specific landing page for William Hill, and this is, you'll notice a great you know, a redesign difference here, a design difference, but well, this is the redesigned version right here, and this is the um, old version. Uh, the redesign, um, you know, these these promotions are dynamic. The promo codes are dynamic. Uh, they're based on the state that they're in, the partner, you know, CBS Sports. Uh, you can see here's another one. This is no partner. This is just, you know, we directed someone in Colorado to this page. And um, you can see that the image is different in the background because this is someone that's interested in golf. We know, you know, the, the incoming customer, we know that they're uh, interested in, in what sport. So 
here's they're coming from ESPN and this is basketball and again the different play code uh, different sorry different promo codes uh, different text and what's what will really blow your mind is actually different terms and conditions so the terms and conditions the legal fine print is actually different uh, for each of these promotions and this used to all be hard-coded and I'll show you that in the code again so here's a promotion here's the text again it's all hard-coded at least this is a little better where it's it's broken out into some data that makes sense but not really here's the terms and conditions for Colorado this is all of Colorado's terms and conditions for every single promotion that we're running in Colorado and you can see that that's 2,000 lines long um, it's also hard-coded so if something changes which it changes again every week dozens of changes to these um, the the biggest change that we saw you know would be amounts or dates you know hey when is this date valid when is this promotion valid so all this stuff was hard-coded and developers again for two years were going in there and just changing text and no one was happy with so the solution so at some point you know again every organization kind of starts this way when they just have to get a website up um, but at some point the the real answer is to go into uh, microservices and to break this stuff out so um, what we did is we used something called content stack this is a third-party service that we basically use as a uh, a simple crud interface a crud ui to have someone update or um, edit you know promotions retail locations states so we can go into retail locations and we can see all these locations in here and I can type in something like a casino and find one so we can look at point place casino and what happened um, with this with this simple data entry UI and this is now now we give we give our marketing department access to this so they can type in all this stuff they can add you know the address and if hours change well let me show you let me show you what we did for hours uh, we have sportsbook hours and kiosk hours because uh, they're, they're actually separate in the old version we would have to say um, you know kiosk only you know we would just they would just put a note in here like kiosk only on Sundays or whatever so we got smart with our data we cleaned up our data and we allowed people to just you know easily select things, change the opening and closing times, um, and that's that's how you know the marketing department can now make these changes, and all these changes that they make show up live on the website. Um, so that was a big win for us because now no now you know our marketing department they would get a phone call from a casino to make a change. Well, they just go into Content Stack make a change and content stack publishes an API and so now all of these promotions are API driven instead of being hard-coded all of these locations are API driven from content stack so that was a big win uh, for for us and and for you know the the, the casinos the locations um, and just saving a ton of developer hours saving a ton of back and forth between the marketing team and developers so I, I would encourage this sort of pattern for lots of companies which is um, move dynamic data to some sort of content management system, a CMS. You don't have to use Content Stack. I think Content Stack is actually uh, one of the more expensive ones, and I don't think it's perfect uh, by any means. I, I think it does the job well. Um, I, I am, I was, we were happy to to to, to use Content Stack, um, but there are other options out there. Uh, but the point is, put all of that content into some what's what's often called a headless CMS. Headless meaning that uh, it, it doesn't care about display, it doesn't focus on display. Instead, the display happens now on, on our front end application, and we just make a call to that API, we get the data, and we decide how it's displayed. That way in the future, if we ever wanna do a redesign, which is what we did from, from this page, it was this page, you know, it was this sort of style to now this sort of style, it's a drastic redesign. Well, we don't have to, um, you know all that hard-coded stuff we don't have to redo you know we don't have to change you just put it in the headless CMS it's kind of uh, display agnostic it doesn't care how you display it it's just about collecting the data and then displaying it or, or spitting it out as an API so that however whatever design that we choose can display it however we want you know and so it's display agnostic and that's kind of the right way to, to approach this sort of thing because I can guarantee you 
your front end will change. Your, your, you will have to redesign, do brand redesigns, marketing refreshes. You'll have to do that every year, every couple of years. Uh, I know that this website has gone through four redesigns. That's four that I know about um, in the past two and a half years, which is extreme. But that's when a, when a market is quickly changing, that's what it's all about. So you have to separate that data um, if you if you want to make it all dynamic. And you do because, again, you don't want developers to have to deal with hard-coded you know, stuff they have to go in here and change and put through their development process, put through their uh, CI, CD process, um, just slowing everything down, um, and then their, you know, their QA process, all that sort of stuff. Uh, put that on onto the folks that are, are already collecting this data and able to do that data entry. And the whole company is going to um, really benefit from from this kind of faster turnaround. But it also has this sort of extensibility, this future proofing. Um, now you're just collecting data and you're just treating it as raw data uh, inside the CMS, and you you're not worried about its display or the fact that it's hard coded. And so if we have to do another redesign in six months, well that's okay. All the data is still in this nice clean format. And, and finally, that's the last thing I'll say is that. We spent time meeting with the people, understanding the data, how it could be best uh, understood. Uh, we, we, we treated our CMS like a database instead of treating it like, you know, oh, let's just throw some strings in there and display it on the page. No, we were really treating it like um, a, a database where we're having very separate, uh, normalized data as, as much as possible um, so that it could be clean and it could be front end agnostic. So if we wanted to build a reporting tool and we wanted to do some reporting on uh, promotions, well, we could do that. Uh, these are just all of our promotions. And we don't, we don't care. We could build a separate tool just using the same API. It doesn't have to be like this corporate website. You could use this data for any sort of application. And that's really the, the another big win is that uh, it just allows for this extensibility of the data.